Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being into addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side. Helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. No drugs required, no doctors required, no medical intervention required for chronic long-term degenerative diseases. But of course, you need raw materials to help the body do its natural work. What may seem like a miracle to some folks is really nothing more than standard operating procedure for the human body. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls here on the Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Let us show you how simple, how easy it can be to reverse your chronic degenerative disease, whatever it may be. If you're on a medication, you're on a prescription drug, let us show you how simple and easy it is to wean yourself off your prescription drugs. Let us help you change your life today. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, or my blog, pharmacistben.com. Thank you to Robert Ludengren, who set, set that up for me, pharmacistben.com. We've got news stories as well as blog posts. You can also go to criticalhealthnews.com and purchase products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can uh, join the Brightside Ben team and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. I can help you build your longevity business if you so desire. I'll be out in the uh, Santa Cruz area next week, Sacramento and Santa Cruz, doing talks for my friend Sherrod and uh, Justin, Justin Baker in Santa Cruz, and Kevin Hurley as well. That's the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th if you're in the Santa Cruz or Sacramento area. Hopefully we'll see you out there. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number today on the Bright Side. We'll get your calls here in our next, uh, in our uh, third segment. So hang tight if you're on hold. I want to continue talking about skin health. We've been talking about the skin now for a couple months. We'll be talking about it for a little bit longer. Keeping in mind that uh, what's true about keeping the skin healthy, what's true about maintaining the health of the skin, is true about maintaining the health of the entire body, the intestines, the bone, the muscle, the brain, the heart, everything. It's really about the health of the entire body. You can't have healthy skin if your entire body is not healthy. And if your entire body is not healthy, chances are pretty good you're not going to have healthy skin. Skin health is about growth. Skin health is about movement. Skin health is about dynamism. And in this way, skin health, whether we're talking dark spots or whether we're talking dry skin or whether we're talking wrinkles and fine lines or whether we're talking eczema or acne or psoriasis, skin health, because it's about growth, has a lot in common with healing, the healing of burns, the healing of breaks, the healing of any damage to the body. That's because the skin is the quintessential healing organ. It turns over super fast. Every four to eight weeks, you've got new skin cells. This is the skin's most notable feature. And when you have any kind of skin health issue, whether it's acne, eczema, wrinkles, or even something as benign as dry skin, we have a healing issue. I've been studying the skin for a long time, over 30 years, as a formulator, as a researcher, and as a pharmacist. I formulated and dispensed countless of my own skincare formulations, countless prescription topical products. As a pharmacist, as a therapist, as a chemist, I've developed products for aging, for wrinkled skin, for dry skin, most especially for rashy, burnt, post-surgical skin, wounded skin, abraded skin, traumatized skin, burnt skin, or any kind of broken skin. 
And what I've come to realize is the strategies that are important for healing wounded skin are exactly the same as the strategies for preventing aging skin, preventing wrinkled skin, preventing fine lines, preventing dryness, or really any other skin health issue. In other words, wound healing is anti-aging. Wound healing strategies are anti-aging strategies. Wound healing is anti-dryness. Wound healing is anti-wrinkle. Wound healing is anti-dark spots, anti-hyperpigmentation. Wound healing strategies, stimulating the growth of cells and stuff are exactly what we want in a topical skincare product. And this is why I get so ticked off by, by business people and marketers and bookkeepers and bankers who enter into the skincare world like it's a joke. Oh, we're just going to be in the skincare business and we're going to put some stuff in our little product here and you rub it on your skin and we'll sell it to you for a lot of money and we're in the skincare business. Bookkeepers and bankers, they want to be in the skincare business because there's a margin in it. There's profit margins because they're selling in 80% water. But it's about health. Wound healing and is anti-aging. Keeping the skin healthy is anti-aging. Dry skin is a health issue. This is a health problem. If you have a, if you have a skin problem, it's a health problem. And it's so rude for somebody to enter into the skincare business when they're not about health. We're always talking about cells and stuff on the bright side. It's a key distinction we have to make if we're going to stay healthy, if we're going to get healthy. We always say all disease is cell disease. Having healthy skin is about having healthy skin cells. Yesterday we talked about high hyaluronic acid. I absolutely love this stuff. Hyaluronic acid is the ultimate skin healing, skin health element. From a chemical perspective, hyaluronic acid is a long chain. Remember, chemistry is about tinker toys. Chemicals are like tinker toys. They, it's all about shape. Chemical reactions are just changes in shape. If you can play with tinker toys and you can understand tinker toys, you can understand chemistry. Hyaluronic acid is like a long tinker toy like shape with lots of little spaces in it. I like to think of it as a long chain of boxes, and these boxes represent openings, and these openings represent spaces for water to fit in, water molecules to fit in. So hyaluronic acid is basically a long tinker toy-like chain with little boxes, and water, water molecules can fit into these little boxes, and it's this relationship between water molecules and the little boxes in our tinker toy chain called hyaluronic acid that gives this stuff its stupendously, and I mean stupendously, important qualities, especially for the skin. In fact, next to vitamins, next to vitamin A and next to vitamin C and perhaps cholesterol, hyaluronic acid is very possibly the skin's most important molecule when it comes to skin health. And it all has to do with the way hyaluronic acid traps water. It's called water binding if you're a chemist. The reaction between water and hyaluronic acid produces several effects. For one thing, it keeps the skin hydrated, and it keeps the skin hydrated at multiple levels. Remember, the skin is made up of layers. You've got a surface layer, and hyaluronic acid will keep the surface layer moist and soft. You've got lower layers, and hyaluronic acid will keep those lower layers moist and soft. And then you've got really, really lower layers, deeper layers. That's the dermis. That's really the bulk of the skin. And likewise, hyaluronic acid keeps the dermis, the lower, lower levels of the skin, soft and moist and bouncy and plump. The cells of the skin make their own hyaluronic acid. And they make their own hyaluronic acid to keep it moist, to keep it soft. The one area of the skin that does not manufacture hyaluronic acid, the one area of the skin that is not really chemically responsive to hyaluronic acid is the skin surface. It's called the stratum corneum, the skin surface. It's a hard layer. It's a barrier. And this surface has got a very interesting characteristic. In fact, this surface has got one of the most, has, has the most unique characteristic in the body of all the cells in the body, of all the tissues in the body, and that is that it's dead. Yes, the barrier is made up of dead cells or dead stuff, basically. There's stuff happening, there's chemistry happening, but there's no life happening. And this is important to understand if we're going to be, uh, if we're going to prevent being ripped off or taken advantage of or exploited by skincare companies and by skincare products. In fact, this misunderstanding about the skin surface, about the dead nature of the skin surface, is really what is behind the sneaky nature of the skincare business. Most skincare products, including hyaluronic acid, topical skincare products, are addressing the dead surface of the skin. That is so ridiculous when you think about it. You could spend $200 on a, on a moisturizing product. You spend $1,000 on a moisturizing product, and you're rubbing it on dead skin, on dead tissue. 
what the what the heck can a thousand dollar moisturizer do for dead tissue what can a hyaluronic acid do for dead tissue uh let me think about it nothing and that's a problem all right i'll continue this when we come back from our break i'm farm suspend all right we are back on the bright side i am farm suspend thanks for joining us we're on the air monday through friday eight to nine pacific and 10 to 11 central time if you miss a program they're all up at brightsideben.com you can also go to benfuchsarchives.com Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. You can also check out my blog, pharmacistben.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren or criticalhealthnews.com. We update both uh, regularly with news stories as well as blog posts, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. We're talking skincare. We're talking about hyaluronic acid. I've been in the skincare business a long time, and I've always wanted to expose this business. Not to be mean, not to be nasty, but as a healthcare professional, I take personal offense at skincare products that lie to people. The reason skincare companies feel like it's okay to be dishonest and to be mendacious and to be deceitful is because skincare, people don't understand in the skincare world anyway, that the skin is an organ of the body. If you have unhealthy skin, you got an unhealthy body. This is not fair to take care, to pretend to take care of people's health with deceitful products. Somebody sent me a note on uh, Kathy Ireland's New Gene product. Now, I'm not gonna blame Kathy Ireland. She puts her name on here. She probably gets a little kickback. I'm sure she's not in the laboratory making stuff. But she got these stem cell products. This is Kathy Ireland's new, new line, New Gene. The first ingredient, check this out. Human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media. It's the first ingredient on her product. Human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media. You know what that means? That's the junk that's in the Petri dish that usually gets thrown out. They're putting it in the product and they claim that the stem cells that were in the Petri dish have leaked out somehow their, their something, their chemicals into the media. That's the crap in the Petri dish, the agar, the jelly. The, if you've ever seen a Petri dish, a Petri dish is a, a little jar, a flat jar that's got stuff in it and they grow bacteria, they grow cells inside the Petri dish, inside the gel and the, the, the cells feed on the material in the gel and then they pull the cells out and they do stuff with the cells. Well, then they throw out the media, they throw out the stuff that the cells are sitting in. Well, this company decided that they were gonna use the media. It's not just this company, there's other companies doing it. They were gonna use the junk <laughs> that gets thrown out. This is how silly this is. And this stuff goes for 150 bucks for, for 20 mLs, for four teaspoonfuls. How do people live with themselves? Now, the uh, next ingredient is a, a little peptide, and there's a little niacin, and then there's just junk. And people, uh, Kathy Ireland puts her name on this. Now, people think they're going to look like Kathy Ireland. I used to like Kathy Ireland. She's very pretty. Great. You're not going to look like Kathy Ireland when you use, <laughs> it's almost silly. It's almost a joke. Human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media. There's a company called New Gene. Look them up. Somebody should send them a note. How do you live with yourself, New Gene? CEO of New Gene. Human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media. Unbelievable. That's the junk that's in the Petri dish that gets tossed. Anyway, didn't mean to digress here. We're talking hyaluronic acid, which is absolutely stupendous, stupendous, stupendous stuff. Maybe uh, just a fascinating molecule, highly electrical stuff. It's piezoelectrical. That means when you press it, it generates an electrical charge. It's involved in healing. It's involved in growth. But it isn't going to do much when you rub it on top of your skin. That's because the surface of the skin is made up of dead stuff. You can't do anything to your skin by rubbing something on the surface unless that stuff is going to penetrate and get down to the lower levels, the viable levels, the living levels. That's why vitamin C is so important because that can, vitamin C can do it. Fatty vitamin C, that is. Not, not ascorbic acid, but fatty vitamin C. Also, retinol can do it. In fact, retinol, as we said so many times, retinol and vitamin C, fatty vitamin C, are the only two ingredients you really need topically. Retinol, or perhaps if you want to go prescription, retinoic acid and fat-soluble vitamin C. This is the reason I came out with the Truth Treatment products. Because I wanted a way, I wanted to provide people with a way to deliver super mega high concentrations of fatty vitamin C. And when you use my Truth Treatment products, you're going to get 80%. Or 60% if you use the balm. The balm's 60%. Fatty vitamin C, 80% in my serum. These are unheard of concentrations. Retinol, my retinol gel is 25% fatty vitamin C with 5% retinol. 
If you really want to have beautiful, healthy skin and you want to address it topically, well, first of all, if you really want beautiful, healthy skin, you got to do the internal stuff, nutritional supplements, essential fatty acids, your healthy start pack from longevity, your bioluminightly essence from longevity, and then topically, vitamin C and vitamin A. Hyaluronic acid isn't going to do much, isn't going to do anything really topically as it's found in most skincare products. There's very little HA can do for you, uh, do for your skin when you rub it on the surface, except perhaps softening the skin surface a little bit. Remember, it's trapping water, so you might get some water trapping on the surface, on the very surface. I can always tell if a product or a company knows what they're doing by looking at the ingredient deck. When I see it, that's basically because I've been doing chemistry for a long time, but you should be doing it too. You want to be an ingredient deck reader. So if you're going to go out and spend 150 bucks on your Kathy Ireland New Gene, uh, New Gene Eye Serum, look at the ingredient deck. If you see the first ingredient deck is human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media, that could be kind of overwhelming. Human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media. What it means is human adipose, that's fat, uh, human adipose derived stem cells, that's stem cells that come from, from a human being's fat. They take that stem cell, they stick it in a conditioned, in a media, in a Petri dish, and then they remove the cells and they put the media or the Petri dish stuff in your product. If you don't know how to read an ingredient deck, you're just going to go with Kathy Ireland or with Nugene. So you've got to be an ingredient, ingredient deck reader. When I see an ingredient, a, a product called hyaluronic acid cream or hyaluronic acid lotion or hyaluronic acid serum, my BS alarm goes off as a chemist. Hyaluronic acid is very sticky and gooky and difficult to work with. That's for one thing. It's really sticky. So you only can use very, very tiny amounts of hyaluronic acid. That's why when, when most skincare companies use hyaluronic acid, they're using it as a 1% gel. So when you buy, if you're a skincare company and you buy hyaluronic acid from a supplier so you can put it in your cream or lotion, you're buying it as a 1% gel. It costs about 60 or 70 bucks a kilo at 1%, at a 1% concentration. And then the company that's making your, the lotion or the cream is going to take that 1% gel that they paid 60 bucks a kilo for, 70 bucks a kilo for, it's a, a, a thousand grams, and then they're going to put it in their product. And then they're going to say, well, we put 20% hyaluronic acid in our product, or 10%, or 5%, or 1%, when they're not telling you it's 20% of a 1% gel. That's 0.2% HA, or even less. That's kind of sneaky, you guys. Now, 0.2% hyaluronic acid is like a speck of hyaluronic acid in, in an ounce. And while you may get a little bit of residual feel, you aren't going to do much for your skin. But because hyaluronic acid, when you take it orally, can be so therapeutic and so beneficial and so important, there's this tendency to assume that we'll get similar benefits when we rub that little speck on the surface of our skin. Well, guess what? It's not true. And if you're using these kind of topical products, you're more than likely wasting your money. The bottom line here is hyaluronic acid is important stuff, but you're not going to get much benefits by applying it topically, especially in the misleading concentrations and forms that are available over the counter. Now, doctors, plastic surgeons, and dermatologists have figured out how to bypass this problem of hyaluronic acid's impermeability through the surface, through the stratum corneum surface, and they're going to, they can actually inject hyaluronic acid to get past the stratum corneum barrier, and there's several products that uh, will take advantage of hyaluronic acid swelling effects to help with fine lines and wrinkles. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. We'll take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Right, we're back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Uh, a couple more things I want to say here about hyaluronic acid. I'm going to talk a lot about it tomorrow. We'll talk about why you want the stuff and how you can get the stuff and the, the right way to get the stuff. Uh, you're not going to get any benefit except for maybe a little bit of softening the surface of the skin. You're not going to get much benefit by rubbing a hyaluronic acid cream uh, on top of your skin. Even if you put straight hyaluronic acid on your skin, nothing would really happen. You might get a little bit of softening of the surface. Doctors have figured out how to bypass this problem, the skin surface barriers resistance to hyaluronic acid by uh, injecting the stuff. 
And you can inject hyaluronic acid into the lower levels of the skin, into the, uh, into the uh, dermis of the skin, the, the deeper layers of the skin. Once it's implanted in the skin's lower levels, it can have a plumping effect, a filling effect, and there's products called Restylin, R-E-S-T-A-L-Y-N, and Juvederm, and these are marketed as filler products that can kind of plump up fine lines and wrinkles. They're not going to do anything for the cells of the skin. Remember, all disease is cell disease, all health is cell health, and you're not going to affect the cells with an injectable hyaluronic acid. But you will plump up the skin a little bit, and we'll have some, uh, some visible, temporary effects, visible but temporary effects. Of course, if you're injecting a foreign substance into your skin, hyaluronic acid, or any foreign substance into the skin, which is a fully-fledged organ of the body, you can always get side effects and you can always get adverse reactions. In the case of hyaluronic acid, granulomas, which are lumps or, or bumps, can form. And they can be pretty hideous, these granulomas, and they're very difficult to treat. These kinds of reactions are especially likely to occur in a body or in the skin of a body that is not healthy. If you have digestive problems, if you have immune problems, if you have a history of allergies, you want to be really careful about in injecting anything, really, into your skin, including Juvederm or uh, Restylane. You will get some plumping effects, and, and, uh, and you, can get some, some, you can improve the appearance of the skin by injecting the stuff, but you're not going to change the health of the tissue, and it's really all about health. I'm a healthcare professional. Skincare professionals should be healthcare professionals, the way I look at it. The best way to get, your, uh, to, uh, to get the, the benefits of hyaluronic acid is to make your own. Your skin is making its own hyaluronic acid. Your joints are making its own hyaluronic acid. Your eyeballs are making their own hyaluronic acid. So can't we figure out how to make our own hyaluronic acid to upregulate hyaluronic acid? Well, indeed, we can, and we will be talking about that tomorrow as we continue talking skin health. Specifically, hyaluronic acid on the bright side. All right, time to hit our phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Melissa in Oregon. What's cooking? Welcome to the bright side, Melissa. Hi, Ben. Hey, I just what's want up? to tell you that I love the Longevity product. Awesome. And I really love your show. It brightens my day. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. How can we help you? I'm calling about my dad. Um, he's 63 years old, and he has a so-called genetic disease called um, Huntington's Korea. Okay. But what I wanted to pick your brain about today was he also has hepatitis C and he's very fatigued from it. Okay. So he's been wanting to get on this treatment called Harvoni. Oh yeah. thousand dollars a pill. I heard it was really expensive and I, I just wanted to talk to you before he even started okay. down that road. How bad is this Huntington's Korea? Huntington's Korea, by the way, is a, is a brain a brain issue. It causes movement disorders. Korea means dancing, and it causes these kinds of abnormal kind of dancing-like movements. Woody Guthrie died of Huntington's Korea. It's, it's a really serious problem. How long has he had it? Um, he got diagnosed about seven years ago. But, how bad um, is it? He was, it's, it's kind of bad. Um, I, I mean, he, he broke his leg recently, so he's recovering from that now, too. Wow, this poor guy. But, yeah, um, it's, how, I don't how know. Old really your, how old he's is he? He's 63. Okay, so he's a young man. He's got lots of good living to do here. Here's what yeah. you need to do. All right? And it's not a coincidence that the hunt, he's got hep C and Huntington's chorea. Basically, when you have Huntington's disease or when you have hep C, you got a body that's kind of falling apart. I was talking to a gal yesterday on the phone, and she was telling me all her health problems. I said, you know, you only have one health problem, ma'am. It's called MBFA disease. I'm telling you that uh, for you, Melissa, for your dad too. He's got only one problem. They can, in the brain, it's Huntington's. In the liver, it's Hep C. He's probably got other issues. I'm sure he's got some digestive problems and other things going on too. By the way, the liver is a digestive organ, so. By definition, if you have hep C, you have a digestive problem. But in any case, he only has one health problem. It's called MBFA disease. You know what that stands for? No. I made it up, by the way. It's called <laughs> my body is falling apart disease. It's, that's the only disease he has, MBFA disease. I named a new disease, my body is falling apart disease. And it covers everything. It covers all chronic degenerative disease. And the only people who care about all these special types of diseases are the specialists. They're the only people who care because that's how they make their living. So we think that we got to treat the brain and the nerves and the bone and the liver. We just got to treat the body because his body is falling apart. So how do you treat the body? First things first, always, 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 always the digestive system. I will guarantee you with 100% certitude, your dad has had a digestive condition his whole life. 
for Huntington's disease to show up and hep C to show up, he has to have had long-term chronic digestive problems for these kinds of issues to show up at the age of 63, which is relatively young, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So, am I? Do you do you know, or does this sound familiar? Um, Long term. I'm not really sure, but okay. So we want to work on the digestive system first. Now he could do a food diary. Probably should do a food diary, and that's where you write down all the foods you eat, and then write down how you feel after you eat those foods every hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. You keep track of it Mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks, and then you eliminate problem foods. That's always the first thing to do. But maybe because he's already broken down so severely, it may be that he wants to just take emergency measures and just do a quick fast. Fast, a three-day fast, a Swear-O-V cleanse. You get on the Swear-O-V product and you do half a bottle of Swear-O-V, which is an amazing, amazing product, by the way. Thank you, Jordan Rubin, for putting that together. Uh, the Swear-O-V is a fermented whey product. It gives you energy. It's got um, uh, potassium and sodium and electrolytes, so it'll give you energy through your fast. Plus, it'll give you the probiotics to stable the gut bacteria. Half a bottle every hour. Uh, in a 12-hour day, you're going to do six bottles, obviously. And uh, then after three days of the cleanse, start eating again. And what he'll notice is foods that he would ordinarily be able to eat and not notice a problem with, he'll start to notice problems. In other words, he will have hit the reset button during those three days that he cleansed. Right. And he'll also feel better. His Huntington's symptoms will subside while he is fasting. And that's very important because that'll give him some relief. He maybe has not had any relief from the Huntington's for, for years, maybe decades. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long he's had it. So just the fasting alone will have a positive effect on the Huntington's. But then when he starts eating again, he's going to notice things. And that will, make the, uh, that will make the food diary and the food elimination a little bit easier for him. He'll, he'll know what, what's causing problems. Then he wants to get on the Biolumin Nightly Essence, 3 in the morning, 3 at night. It probably wouldn't hurt him to use the ultimate enzymes after meals and also ultimate enzymes between meals. Uh, enzymes between meals can have a wonderful blood thinning effect, wonderful anti-inflammatory effects. So between meals, maybe uh, two, two or three enzymes on, on an empty stomach, and then with his meals, two or three enzymes, and do a little apple cider vinegar with his meals. Throw in the Fucoid Z, which can also help the digestive system and also has anti-inflammatory effects. And of course, you want him on the Healthy Star Pack, sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. The hep C issue, as I said earlier, is a digestive issue probably. The liver is a digestive organ. After you eat, when you eat food, food goes into your intestine, it crosses over the intestine, goes into the blood, and from there it goes right into the liver. So the liver is part of this whole digestive process, and he'll notice that once he starts to eliminate problem foods, he'll notice that his liver symptomology will start to improve as well. Now, the, the $1,000 a pill medicine supposedly you know, kills the virus, but he's got bigger fish to fry, and there's no... There's no way to prevent the virus from coming back, and he can't take a thousand-dollar pill, a uh, thousand-dollar pill medicine for the rest of his life. So, working on the digestive system is first and foremost what he wants to do. Hang tight, because I got a couple more things for you. Don't go away, Melissa. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six six. All right, we are back on the Bright Side, talking to Melissa in Oregon about her dad. Melissa, you there? Yep. Okay. So uh, first things first, uh, if we take care of the digestive system, we're going to take care of inflammation in the body, and that'll take care of, uh, that'll help with the liver, and it'll also help with the Huntington's chorea, depending on how broken down your, your dad is, and chances are, if he's only 63 and he's got these kinds of symptoms, that he's been doing something, the wrong thing for a long time. Is he a smoker, by the way? He is, and he also okay. eats a ton of sugar. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you can only do what you could do. You can only do what you can do. So get them on the healthy star pack. You probably have to throw in the sweeties after all your, after all his meals. Do the uh, Biolumin Nightly Essence. If you can get him to do a swear of the cleanse, he's going to notice immediate results just from the fasting. And certainly food elimination will make a big difference as well. Biolumin Nightly Essence and digestive enzymes, these, those are the things we, we talked about before the break. But there's a couple other things that you could do for him as well for the liver. And I would be doing this. Uh, this is what I'd be doing if it was me. Um, you want him on a, uh, something called NAC, NAC, unbelievably important for the liver. NAC is actually emergency room medicine for liver poisoning. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper than Harvoni. Maybe a gram a day, 500 milligrams twice a day on NAC. 
uh, have him using a little bit of glutamine powder, and he'll get glutamine in whey protein in the Slender FX if he wants to use the Longevity products, but I'd be throwing in a little glutamine powder, maybe a teaspoonful a day. Vitamin C is stupendously, critically important for the liver and the, and the uh, brain as well, the nervous system as well. Uh, you'll get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but he may want to throw in maybe an, an extra quarter teaspoonful a day uh, in water and sip on some vitamin C water with his Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Uh, throw in the Ultimate Selenium, maybe 400 micrograms a day, anywhere from 200 to 400 micrograms a day of the Ultimate Selenium. And then uh, I'd be using something called Alpha lipoic acid, which is also very, very helpful for the liver, maybe a thousand milligrams a day. There's other things you could do as well. Vitamin E has wonderful effect, uh, benefits for the liver, 400 IU a day. Uh, you may want to get something called M. MCT oil or use coconut oil. Coconut oil is a source of MCT oil. Yesterday we talked about how important coconut oil is. Coconut oil is 60% MCTs. And MCTs are also very, very helpful for the liver. If he does have a liver problem, chances are he's not going to be absorbing his fats as well. Uh, that means low energy, and that means brain problems as well, because the brain runs, uh, depends anyway, on uh, fatty nutrients, a lot of fatty nutrients. So using MCT oils with his vitamin E, uh, 400 IU a day, that can help with the absorption of his vitamin E. And you also get a little bit of vitamin E in the coconut oil too. He wants to do a couple more things. Uh, acetyl L-carnitine can be helpful. And then also lecithin granules after all his meals can be helpful as well. So long story short here, my dear Melissa, your dad can do a lot of things to help himself. A fasting, supplements, uh, dietary strategies, all of these can be very, very helpful. Uh, if he's smoking and he's eating a lot of sugar, that's going to make things worse. Uh, it's going to make it more difficult for the supplements to work. But if he's eating a lot of sugar and he's smoking, it becomes extra important that he gets on a good nutritional supplement program and takes care of his diet, dietary strategies and starts to practice a little bit of that intermittent fasting and caloric restriction strategies we talk about all the time. Okay, mm -hmm. I hope I helped you, Melissa. Anything Thank else? Thank you so much. God bless. That's good luck with everything. Take care. Okay, uh, Sal, Sal Jr. in Colorado. What's up? Where hey, in Colorado hey. are you? Where are you, Sal? <clears throat> uh, my home is in Bailey. In where? Bali. Bali, B-A-L-I, like in -A -L -I, Indonesia? B-A-L-I, yeah. Oh, you're in Indonesia now? No. <laughs> oh, you're just visiting? No, I live here in Bali, Bali, Colorado. It's oh, Bailey. I thought you said Bali. Okay, I got you. Bailey. I'm sorry. Bailey. I apologize. Okay, Sal, what's going on, my friend? All right. Uh, my girlfriend was getting into the car yesterday, and she, she seemed like she was very hurt. Uh, she has pain in her hips, and she says she tells me that she has shingles. Okay, is she sure it's shingles? Have... Mm, she, she is sure it is. Okay, well let's talk a little bit about shingles, because even if she doesn't have shingles, a lot of people do, and it's unbelievably miserable. Oh my God, you can have shingles anywhere in your body. I've seen it in the eye, and I can't. It's just heartbreaking. And the peop most people who get shingles are older or in some way compromised, unhealthy in some fashion. There's a shingles vaccine that they sell you, and, uh, and there's really not much you can do for shingles once it happens. It's, it's just really, really unpleasant. And like with uh, our last caller, it's a viral condition. Shingles is a virus. It's similar to the herpes virus. And what you're looking at is a depressed or suppressed immune system. The immune system is located largely in the digestive tract. So first and foremost, you got to do all your digestive strategies. I'm not going to you know, beat a dead horse here, but everything we just talked about with Melissa. You want her doing intermittent fasting. If she just fasts for two or three days, she's going to notice relief from the pain, from the shingles, uh, pain from the shingles. Uh, so just caloric restriction and fasting can be a hugely important strategy. Make sure she's on the Biolumin Nightly Essence. I'd be throwing in the Fucoid Z, which somebody told me now comes as a powder. Uh, in addition to the capsules, Fucoid Z has immune boosting properties, antiviral properties, as well as digestive support properties. Make sure she's sipping on her Beyond Tangy Tangerine and using the Healthy Start Pack. And then uh, if she wants to throw in a couple more things that have some antiviral properties, vitamin E, 400 international units a day, have her using a little bit of ex a little bit extra vitamin C. And all the things we just talked about, by the way, for the liver can also help with shingles. Selenium is tremendously antiviral. If she wants to go all out, 
And this is also from Melissa, if you're still listening, Melissa, for your dad. Intravenous nutrition, especially intravenous glutathione, G-L-U-T-A-T-H-I-O-N-E, can give her some quick relief from the shingles and can speed up the healing process. And that might be something for you to think about. Also, Melissa, if you're still listening for your dad, intravenous glutathione might be helpful. So healthy start pack, digestive strategies, caloric restriction, fasting, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, OP, uh, ultimate selenium, and then also, uh, and the Fucoid Z, and then also intravenous nutrition. All of these are wonderful strategies for dealing with shingles, but you want to treat shingles as an opportunistic health crisis where the body waits or the virus waits for an opportunity to attack, to jump, whether it's a shingles virus or hepatitis virus or herpes virus, whatever kind of virus you have, these are opportunistic issues. The virus waits for you to be weak. And by the way, Sal, when the body is stressed emotionally or psychologically or mentally, that also provides the virus an opportunity to pounce, if you will. So using deep breathing techniques and calming the body down can be, also, can be very helpful. And if Melissa's still listening, uh, your dad can, uh, practicing deep breathing techniques, that can be helpful too. Is that okay, Sal? Anything else you want to ask? Yeah, that's fine. And I know she is a little stressed because her uh, older dog has been sick. I'm sorry to hear that, and but you'll notice that the shingles probably came up as the stress increased. That's when the shingles tends to show up. They're opportunistic. It's not that like we need, we don't need to be fixed. We need to be sustained, and we need to be nourished, and we need to be loved, and we need to take care of ourselves in a, through emotional, mental strategies as well as food and dietary strategies, and of course, nutritional supplementation. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. I'm going to move on here, buddy. Thank you for your call. I appreciate it. All right, Angela in Florida. Welcome to the bright side. Good morning. Hi, pharmacist Ben. How are you? I'm doing good. What's going on? How can we help you? Thanks so much for your skin care series with Amanda Rideout. That basically oh. helped me discover adrenal acne, the combo with androgenic acne. Nice. So question, How's yes, your skin? So, did, did it help you? So, okay, so yes, the, the icky, pussy, big kind of bumps that would come on my cheeks and um, chin area, that yeah. has calmed down. Oh, that's so, awesome. Thank you so much for that. Good, Good deal. Praise God. I love hearing stories like that. Thank you, Angela. What's, what, how can we help you today? The oily skin, though. Uh, my two questions is, with the vitamin B5, how yes. long should I take a gram or two grams a day? Before Lifetime. I Lifetime. But you always, thanks for asking that question. That's a great question. Vitamin B5 is one of my all time favorite nutritional, skin nutritional supplements. Uh, B5 helps the body process fats. It's very important for hormone health, for women's hormone health, if you're dealing with hot flashes, for example. And it's also important for oily skin. But you do need high doses of it, as you're pointing out, Angela. And by high doses, anywhere from one to two to three, even up to five grams a day. Making sure you're taking it with the entire B complex. Whenever you take niacin or vitamin B5, or, or thiamine or B6 or B12, you always want to take it with the entire B complex. That's really important. And you're going to want to do it as long as you can for the rest of your life, Angela. Uh, you want okay. to stay on the and B5. The oily skin should reduce in well, a here's what I'm going to tell Let me talk about the oily skin here. B5 is important and it can be very helpful, but oily skin is one of the ways that the body manifests stress. And I'm talking not just emotional stress. You know, we hear the word stress, we always think mental or emotional, but physical stress. So if you're dealing with oily skin, you've got to see what's burdening the body. Something is burdening the body. It could be sugar. That's oftentimes a burden. It could be digestive health problems. And, of course, it could also have to do with uh, breathing issues or mental or emotional issues. So you've got to deal with oily skin as a sign that the body is under duress. Angela, I want, it's a very important subject, and we are talking skin. I wonder if I can get you to call back tomorrow because we're out of time. If you can, that'd be great because it's an important subject. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. And that's all the time we have for today. I apologize for leaving you on hold. Uh, if you uh, call back tomorrow and tell our call screener we left you on hold and we'll get you first up, try to call in early on the program so we can squeeze in as many calls as possible. Thanks for listening, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking hyaluronic acid and skin health. And maybe we'll, I, we'll try to get to a protein that's very important and very little known that has a lot to do with not just keeping your skin healthy, but also with protecting your skin from the sun sun, the natural way, the non-sunscreen way. We'll do that tomorrow and in the coming days as we continue talking skin health on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful